Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with a project for cat scrappiness. Today I'm going to be using some of the items from the Ukraine Strong Bundle to create a card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Cat Scrappiness debuted their Ukraine Strong Bundle last month and it has just recently become available as single items as well. In the bundle you get the stamp set and die set you see in front of you and there is a coordinating 6x8 paper pad. Now I will have the individual items as well as the bundle linked in that description box below. And as a bonus, all of the profits from the sale of the bundle or the individual items will be going to the Ukraine Crisis Relief Fund. While you're visiting the product links in the description box below, you are going to see lots of inspiration from the design team members. In front of me now are a couple cards I've created with the bundle. Over on the left was a mini slimline, and I tried to highlight that single ribbon here with the Ukraine Strong underneath it. Over on the right, I used some of the pattern papers along with the sentiment from the stamp set and some fun enamel embellishments. For my card today, I will be sticking with the yellow and blue to represent Ukraine, but I will be using the Together We Can Make a Difference, so you could always switch the colors up for multiple occasion cards. As I start the process, when I add any other tools or products, I will be sure to let you know. But don't forget, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by doing the stamping. The first image I'm going to use will be the solid flower and I will be stamping it in yellow and blue inks. Now I am going to need multiple of these so I'm using my Misty and I did pre-cut a couple squares of white cardstock so that I could fit four total flowers on this just by rotating it to a new corner each time. Once I had all eight flowers stamped, I then brought in the flower center from the stamp set and I set it up so it would stamp, well, in the center of the flower. Now this is not perfect when it gets lined up, but that is completely okay because later I'm going to be stamping the outline and it kind of covers up the white space between the center and the outer ring of the flower. I kept stamping until I had a center on all eight of the flowers and then I set these two pieces off to the side to give the ink some time to dry. While that was drying I brought in another scrap of white cardstock and I stamped the sentiment which reads together we can make a difference and I used some VersaFine Onyx Black and placed this in the middle of my white scrap. I just want to make sure later that I have room around it for my heart dye. I did go ahead and use my heat tool quickly on those floral images just to ensure they were completely dry for the next step, which is heat embossing. I will be using the outline floral stamp from the set and heat embossing that with white powder. I aligned the outline with the solid floral and then once I picked that up with the door of my Misty, I brought in my Cat Scrappiness Telescopic Embossing Powder Tool and I dusted the powder on this piece before moving on to stamping. This will ensure that the powder sticks only to where I want it. Now I do want these nice and juicy, so I made sure to really ink up each stamp and then use my presser tool to get a nice solid watermark ink because once I have these first four stamped, I brought in my embossing tray and my powder and poured the powder on there. Yeah. 
I used this same process with the yellow flowers and then I brought in my heat tool and I set the powder. And just like always, this part is so magical. When I did my stamping earlier, I made sure to keep the top of the outline and the solid image facing up in my misty. Now for the die cut, it's kind of hard to tell what the top is. So I created this little cardstock template here, which I just keep in my die cut package right there with those three dies. And I have put a little pencil dot right above where that top leaf is. That way I can just line this up around each of my stamps and then I tape it to my stamped piece bring in the die and move it around until it fits right in that opening and then tape that to my die cutting template. Then I can easily take this off screen to die cut it and you'll see there I have a pretty even nice white border. To do the next one, I leave the die taped in place but I remove the piece that is holding my template down to the cardstock. And then I rotate my stamped piece around, get that put back in place, and run it back through the die cutter. So I did the same process until I had eight of my flowers cut out. While I was in the die cutting mode, I brought in my A2 quilted backdrop cover plate die and the double stitched heart die set. I will be using that cover plate die as a background for my card and I cut the sentiment out with the second from the largest heart. I just like how they both have some stitching on them. Now that all of the pieces are ready, we can get the card put together. I start by adding the quilted piece to the front of a top fold card base. And then you'll notice here that I'm only using six of the flowers. I kept two more for later. I decided that instead of going around the complete outside of the heart, which was my original intention, that I would just do two sets of three kind of in the opposite corners behind the heart. That way you can still tell the shape of the sentiment piece, but it's not too overbearing with the flowers or too full. Once I had the flowers where I thought I wanted them, I brought in some removable tape and I tore off a piece that was long enough so I could hold each of those trios of flowers together while I added adhesive to the back. After I had the flowers flipped back over and in place on the card front, I removed the tape and then carefully picked up the top flower and put a couple dots of glue underneath where that would kind of come up because it wasn't glued down to the card base. For the second bunch of flowers, because I wasn't putting them in the exact corner of the card front, I brought in a pencil and made a small mark in one of the indentations on the blue flower. That way, after I added glue to the back, I brought it back in and I could align up the little pencil notch with the notch on the die cut flowers. I let this dry for about five minutes and while that was drying off camera I added some foam tape to the back of my heart. This way when it went onto the card there was a little added dimension. To finish the card off I did want to add a little shine so I brought in my cat scrappiness embellishment box and decided to go with the sparkling snow pearl mix. I poured some into my embellishment tray and here's a little tip for you. To get these so the pearls are all right side up, you can gently shake the tray back and forth and it kind of flips them over so they're laying on their flat side. Now they are ready for you to grab and start putting onto your project. For me, I tried some where I had a trio of pearls on top of the heart and some on the card front beside it and I did decide to go with the pearls beside just so I wasn't adding any more bulk for mailing and then I brought in my art glitter glue and I started adding the pearls to the card. I did give those about five minutes to dry completely and clearly and here are some close-up looks at the finished card.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.